Greetings and welcome to the Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team video where today I'm going over the World Team Championships for Kill Team being held in Michelin this weekend. But before we get into things, please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of today's video. Are you happy for seeing Kill Team at the WTC? All that kind of jazz as well as which team you're supporting. I remember I've got a Discord you can check out for in the episode description below. An affiliate cam and games and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support as well. But let's get on with the video. So yeah, if you haven't been aware... The World Team Championships is a long-running multinational team tournament. Originally started as the ETC, but then they broke off because of ETC bureaucracy to set up their own event for 40k called the World Team Championships. And they are known for basically doing their own style of terrain layouts of 40k and having eight player teams from multiple countries from around the world hosting their tournament yearly, showing which country effectively has the best team for Warhammer 40,000. And this year, they've branched into Kill Team. So I'll be covering the Kill Team aspect, explaining that all to you, showing you why it's great that WTC now has Kill Team as one of their core games. So the WTC has been running for a few years now, and it's great to see Kill Team is finally a part of it. Unfortunately, I can't be there this year, but hopefully there's next year. The WTC for Kill Team is running this weekend and I'd just like to go over it for explaining it to those who are interested and those who aren't aware to help boost the news and, well, the event itself to make more people aware and hopefully get more people involved for next year. Comparing it with 40k, so at the moment 40k has 40 countries. Each country can only have one team and each team has eight players. and They can additionally have one captain who is a non-player player helps to kind of supervise help with pairings and then you can have like other support players coming along it's a long established team format event and personally team warhammer in no matter what game system you're playing is generally my favorite way to play warhammer because you're you're coming together it's not just down to one player it's down to a team it's all about team spirit representing your country having a nice fun time and you know, even though winning is great, it's just, you know, going out for a weekend with your team, trying to show off. You don't have to win as long as like most people just go there for fun. And it's just great to see countries come together, show off their best talent and just have fun playing Warhammer. So the fact that we're finally getting it for Kill Team is great. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot of big players being behind the scenes who've been helping. You know, I've been involved a bit myself, not to the extent of others. So I just want to do my part in terms of like, you know, showing it because it's really cool. It's great to see Kill Team grow this way because the 40k side is very huge. So hopefully we can keep building up for Kill Team to get more people involved. So WTC is currently held in Brussels in Mechelen. That's where it's been run at the moment. And for Kill Team at the moment, you've got a singles event. So the, this has been recorded on the Thursday because I'm very overwhelmed with work. But uh, they're doing the singles event, which is Thursday and Friday, which has 44 players at the moment, I believe. And two of the top players get tickets to the World Championship of Warhammer, which is really cool. But the main event for Kill Team is the Saturday and Sunday where we have the full teams. So I'll be actually breaking those down in a second. But if you're going there for Kill Team, they have a singles event and then the main event. I believe 40k does something similar, but their singles event is longer in terms of earlier in the week because... The team's event is much longer because, well, they have 300 players. So, you know, there's a lot of things to work through. And obviously, when you're pairing a team event for Kill Team, it's very different to a singles event because they have half an hour for pairings than two hours for the game because pairing works very differently. It's not like... It's not just one country versus another. Each country puts for, uh, forward two defenders. And the... Def well, you put for one defender first and then the opposing team puts forward two attackers. And then... The defender gets to pick the mission, but they pick one of the attackers to play. And then that attacker gets to pick the board they're playing on. So either open or into the dark. And then the other attacker gets paired against the other defender. And then obviously the other team puts forward one of their defenders. And then the other team now puts forward their two attackers. And then the two unpaired players, which are basically just the third attackers each, pair against each other. But this is very crucial because the cool thing about team events is the pairing process is very unique. And because you kind of get to tailor your matchups a lot, factions that normally aren't good in a general setting because they struggle with bad matchups become a lot better because they get to either tailor their matchups or tailor their mission. Because the cool thing as a defender, you can basically, one defender can pick capture maximum once and one defender can pick loot a maximum of once. And having defenders eat up those is very good. So you can now have one defender that picks only capture, one defender that picks only uh, loot. 
So then the rest of your attackers just basically play secure and just being able to tailor your matchups. For example, Exaction Squad becomes really good as an attacker pick because normally Exaction Squad suffer in general because they have quite annoying bad matchups that are very common in terms of factions that they just don't like playing. But when you can tailor the matchups that they're good into facing, it becomes a lot better. So there's actually a lot of depth into the pairing and team selection as a whole. And I could de devote most of the video rambling into the depths of team selection, but that's a conversation I've had with certain t uh, team captains who have gone into this event because it's just, it's what I enjoy about team events because it, it rewards your knowledge of the game as well as your players who have actually even specialized in those factions. So you can have the interesting thing where a player who normally doesn't like win events but still does well, but they're really loyal to this almost counter pick anti meta team suddenly becomes really, really good in team format. I was actually explained to me first years ago by some of my friends who played in WTC for kill, for 40k where they were like oh you know like at the time grey knights they weren't oh, they weren't really good in a general tournament but in team format they become a lot better because you get to tailor them into specific matchups that they normally wouldn't face consistently so hopefully that will make sense but I know what you're all really looking for and that's the breakdown of the teams and factions but don't worry I have it all broken down for you, so let's get into it. So currently there are 14 teams for a kill team. Now, I'll get onto this a little bit later in the video, but unlike 40k, kill team is allowing countries to have multiple te uh, teams, which we'll see later. And also, instead of having eight players per team, it's only five. So this is just alphabetical order. This is on the Best Coast Pairings link, which I'll post in the episode description. But first, we have Team Australia with Skill Issue. So their team captain is Alexa, the gentleman who won uh, the World Championships of Warhammer for 2023. So Alexa is running Halfkin Salvagers, which have been, you know, not really unsurprising. They're qu quite a good faction based off the last, last balance day. It's like they were already good and they got a lot of nice buffs. Then we have Brian with Warp Coven, Emma with Corsair Void Scarred, Liam who is one of the best players in the world at the moment. Top 10 in ITC, doing really well. He's been dominating Australian events. Pretty much Australia's best player this year and a very, very good player. Like I had, uh, it was really fun chatting to him and we didn't get to play at uh, Worlds last year, but it was just really cool. And everyone who I've spoken to has had a great time playing him and he's a very good player, but he's playing Wormblade, which is interesting because I thought he was actually going to be Hunter Clade. And then we've got Sam running Blooded. So it's an interesting team there. I'll rate the teams in a second. I'll just rate it now. So it's a very interesting team. Notably, there's no Brood cover. Well, Brood Brothers or Mandrakes. But Mandrakes, because of the pairing process, you could argue aren't great. So it's an interesting team loadout there. I'm not sure who would be their dedicated defenders. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Liam defending as Wormblade on loot. That would be very something I wouldn't be surprised to see. And then we could see Sam defending as blooded on capture because that'd be very good for blooded next we have team germany please please forgive me we have uh lutzi as their team captain they have killian with novitiates lucas with mandrakes L L lutzi with brood brothers sebastian with scout squad and then stefan with halfkin salvager so we see another halfkin salvager pick which is interesting more scouts you know scouts are very very good at the moment brood brothers I expect every team to have Brood Brothers. We'll get onto this later. And then Novitiates. I, th I really like Novitiates. So I've been discussing with Bart, one of our UK players. He doesn't rate them at the moment, especially in WTC format. Like, they're still really good, but they have a lot more bad matchups. But I think Novitiates will be great as attackers here. Because Novitiates are very strong. So they they don't mind playing into the dark or open. But especially when you can suddenly go, oh, this is like a team, close combat team, I pick open. But... If it's a more shooty team, I can actually pick into the dark and dominate them more. So very interesting. I would expect I'm actually not sure who would be their defenders in this team, because this is the interesting thing. I'll get into team construction in a bit. You can have dedicated defenders and attackers, but this team seems more like it might be in flux with who its defenders and attackers are, where they can do it by opponent basis, which is technically the better thing to do. So you're more reactive instead of being more predictable, but does put more work and like guesswork into pairings which is the issue but that's why pairings are 30 minutes but interesting team composition there i like it a lot then for one of our free spanish teams we have spain primus 
Unfortunately, I hear Spain were trying to get the legendary player Juan Reis, but he wasn't available. So, uh, but for for Spain Primus, their team captain is Ace. So they have Hover with Brood Brothers, Carlos, amazing, with Inquisitorial Agents, currently number one in ITC. Very, very good. He just won uh, the 92 player Spain event with Inquisitor Agents. Ace with Mandrakes, Mario with Phobos, and then Quickums with Scout Squad. So very interesting. Quickums was playing Commandos for the most of the last season and now has switched to Scouts, which is completely understandable. They are very similar roles, but Scout Squads are very good at the moment. Mandrakes, obviously Ace plays Mandrakes really well. Carlos is the best Inquisitor agent player at the moment. And then Harva was known for Chaos Colts and he's now playing Brew Brothers, which is expected. A very strong player with a very strong team. The only weak link, I would actually say, even though Mario is probably a really good player, is Phobos. So Phobos is probably a good pick as an attacker, but I do not rate elite teams at this moment. I think the strongest elite team players for WTC would be uh, Nemesis Claw. I can see why they've picked Phobos, but I think that's the only weak link in terms of faction-wise, but otherwise a very, very powerful and formidable team there. Then in Spain, Secondus, their team captain is Javier. So they have Camarada with Phobos, Crest Daffer with Blooded, Javier with Inquisitorial Agents, Rodeles with Gellapox, and Tamer with Brood Brothers. So this is a very powerful team as well. I'm still, I'm never going to be fully confident with players who pick Phobos for their team. It's like, I, I definitely see the pick. There's a lot of anti-obscuring ability they can use to abuse the WTC maps, but I'm not a fan of Phobos. Uh, Blooded makes sense, although I was expecting Papa Croot to run Fast Stalker Kin Band. Uh, and then Javier on Inquisitor Agents, very good at the moment. Gellapox as well, a very good pick. Perfect as Defender, always picking Capture. Very likely to get you a 20-point win. And then Brood Brothers as well. So once again, another strongly composed team. Then we have the third Spanish team with their captain, Jose. So you've got Ho Biras with Scout Squad. Uh, Alba Cortez with Brood Brothers. Manek with Warp Coven. Pablo with Commandos. And then their last player, who has a great name, with Phobos Strike Team. So interesting, every Spain team has picked Phobos Strike Team. You know, I can see why. Phobos are very popular in Spain. And then they've got Scout Squad, very good pick. Brood Coven. Warp Coven is interesting as a attacking pick, attacker pick, because, you know, when they can tailor their matchups, they're very, very good. So I, I really like the Warp Coven pick. And then Commandos as well. Commandos are great picking as defender with loot. Once again, another strong team. Then we have the first French team with their captain, Holan. So you've got Arthur with Phobos Strike Team, Clement with Pathfinders, Hola Jolan with Brew Brothers, Matthew with Novitiates, and Remy with Scout Squad. So this is, once again, Phobos. Definitely can see why based on the boards. Pathfinders, really good pick. I was actually expecting more Pathfinders. Uh, and I think Pathfinders will do very well on these boards. Brew Brothers, Novitiates, once again, Ma Matthew played at the Gunham Open. He did very well with them, so I wouldn't be surprised him running there. And then Remy with Scout Squad. Remy is one of my favorite players in the world. I know him so well. And uh, yeah, Scout Squad is just so good. Like, he loves elites, but, you know, if you're an elite player, just, just you know, you're going to love Scouts. But a very, very well-rounded team there. Also very good picks. As I said, the only weak link I would say... On paper, not player-wise, just from a faction purpose, is still Phobos, but a very flexible team. Then for the second French team, uh, their captain is Francois. So you've got Cedric with Galapox Infected, Damien with Corsair, Francois with Wormblade, Martin <laughs> McFly with Blooded, and then Thibar with Brood Brothers. So very good team selection there too. I really like Galapox, you know, I love Galapox at the moment. Of course, I'm going to rate Galapox. Corsair Voids Guard is a very interesting pick as well. I've seen a few Corsair Voids Guard, they really do well being able to pick into the dark, but also they actually can play the WTC boards quite well. Wormblade, as I said, very, very good pick after discussing it with one of the team captains. Totally get why picking Wormblade as defender on loot. And then, you know, Blooded, good as well. Probably just great at the moment. And then, yeah. 
Group Brothers, really good team. Then we have Team Italy with their captain Ernesto. So they've got Ciro with Blooded, Ernesto with Fastalker Kinban, the absolute legend, the only Fastalker Kinban player. And uh, then we have Michael with Scout Squad, Savaro with Wormblade, and Tommaso with Nemesis Claw, which I really like. Look, Nemesis Claw are great, right? I can see them doing really well. So this is also a great team. I mean, MVP team because of Fast Talker Kinban. I know Italy really rates Fast Talker Kinban, but, you know, and especially with how this terrain has been ruled, can totally get where they're coming from. But yeah, you know, very brave. I hope it works out for them. I love to see it. So yeah, Italy currently the fan favorite team. I'd expect them to gain lots of cheers from players around the world. Then we have Team Netherlands. So we have their team captain, Daniel. So Daniel is running Nemesis Claw. Freak is running Brood Brothers. Jasper is running Scout Squad. Jorni is running Commandos. And Karim is running Galapox. Very good, well-rounded team here. Very, very strong. Like I could see Galapox and Commandos being their defenders with the other three being their attackers. And I think this is a very good pick. A nice, well-rounded team. Very, very strong. I don't know any of the players, but on paper, very, very solid. Then I'm a broken record, but we have one of our three Polish teams. So for the first Polish team, we... Please, I just forgive me. Blaz Blazedz with Corsair Voice Guard, Lucas with Nemesis Claw, Mas Masieg with Commandos, Wojciech with Wormblade, and Lucas with Legionary. So we actually have two elite teams on this team, which is very, very, I like it. It's brave in terms of like bold strategy, but I, I really like Nemesis Claw. I like Legionary, especially with their roster changes. Wormblade, a really good pick. And we've got another Corsair Void Scard. The only thing is, I can see probably Commandos and Wormblade as their defenders, but maybe this might be more Flux. But I like this team. Uh, I love people playing Elites. So it looks very interesting. Uh, forgive me, there were only two teams. I, I can't count because, uh, you know, I can't read as well. So for the other Poland team, we have Mateus. So Amadeus is running Commandos. Yo, yo, Amadeus. Uh, Bartos is running Hankin Jaeger. Love that pick. Mateus as Brood Brothers, Mikkel as Hunter Clade, and Lucas as Felgal Ravager. So this is actually a very, very powerful picked team. Like Commandos, solid. I really like Hankin Jaeger, and the fact that they're probably going to be attackers means they can dodge the crucial <laughs> Halfkin Salvager matchup. Because um, Halfkin Salvagers absolutely dominate Hankin Jaegers because of the locator but I think Hankin Jaegers are really really good and it's probably going to surprise a lot of people Mateusz with Brew Brothers you know I'm not surprising there Hunter Clade decent pick you know uh, I've, I've seen the rationale but behind taking Hunter Clade like their rationale is basically they're a good all-round team and they will either win decently or lose by a very small amount but we'll see how that plays out. And then Felgor Ravager, which I still think is solid. Like if you're playing Felgor Ravager from a more defensive grinding out play style, they're still really, really good. And we've seen that reflect in the stats. So I can definitely see this pick working out. So a very powerful team here. So then we have one of the two UK teams. So for the first team, we have uh, their team captain as Mikkel. So Mikkel's picked Exaction Squad. Very, very good. He's probably the best exaction squad player in the world then we have nick with brood brothers peter with commandos simon with mandrakes and then tom with inquisitor agents so once again a very well-rounded team i really like exaction squad if if i was going to build a team i would definitely include an exaction squad on my team very good as attackers at the moment because you know the great thing about exaction squad at the moment is they do well into a lot of the meta teams and when you can tailor your matchups you're just going to play all those meta teams all the time so really good there nick brood brothers he's a very good player was playing commandos now switched to brood brothers peter i can see a solid defender as commandos Simon as Mandrakes, and then we've got Tom, who's a very good player as well. He was, he's been tearing up the UK scene with Novitiates, but he's currently playing Inquisitor Agents. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. It's a very good team, but I, I'm expecting to see a lot of people being caught out by the powerfulness of Exaction Squad, but it should do well. Then we have the next UK team with their captain, Ryan. So we've got Bart with Halfkin Salvagers. He's been playing Halfkin for a long time and loving their current changes. Very, very good player. One of the 
best players in the UK. Then we have Dan, you know, the the young UK prodigy with Brood Brothers. He hasn't been playing much this year, but he's back for WTC. Then we've got Guy with Mandrakes. He's been playing Mandrakes for a long time. Very, very, very good with those. Ryan with Hunter Clade. He won the Sheffield GT with Hunter Clade. And then we've got Serkan, also very good. He won uh, the recent French tournament, I think two months ago with Felgol, but he's now currently running Commandos. It's a very decent selection team there. Like, basically, you've got all the core picks, and it doesn't look like a team that will lose too many points when it does lose, which I'll get into the pairings stuff and point differentials in a bit, but a very solid team that should do well as well. And then we've got the one, the only, Team USA, captained by Chris, Chris Chicken Wing Backy. He is amazing. So we've got Adrian, I'm not biased, with Mandrakes. You know, he was number one with Mr. ITC, winning ITC for 2023. He won, he won LVO, you know, the, the US monster with Commandos now with Mandrakes, doing very well with Mandrakes. He just won, I believe, the Tacoma Open. Then we have Chris, also been tearing up the US scene. Very, very good player, running Brood Brothers. Then we have the Kimmy Jelly running Wormblade. He also did really well at Tacoma, winning best overall with his Wormblade. Then we have Kellen. He was also one of the first uh, at Worlds, you know, with uh, Scout Squad, doing very well there. And then we've got Sam, not just with Compendium, Chaos Demons, the only Compendium team in the entire event. So you've got a lot of hard hitters here. Obviously, I've been talking to Team USA a lot, uh, and I know everyone there pretty much very intimately but it's a very very powerful team i understand their choices quite well and i think people are going to get thrown off by the chaos demon pick you know it's, it's like it's better to let it play out than explain it but i think this team can do really well but i think all the teams can do really well but i really like usa i think even though originally usa was i mean originally italy was my favorite because the crew pick but I do have to say Team USA ed edges are over just because of Chaos Demons. So very, very interesting picks there. I think well, all the teams are very, very powerful. So it should be interested to see how it plays out. So you've seen the teams, but what does that all mean? Now, let me break it down in some number format. So as you can see on the screen, based down in faction popularity, we have Brood Brother with 11 players. You know, that's fine. Scout Squad with seven. Commandos with six, Mandrakes with five, Wormblade with five, Blooded with four, Phobos with four, Corsair, Galapox, Halfkin, Inquisitor Agents, and Nemesis Claw all with three players each. Hunter Clade, Novitiates, and Walk Coven with two. Then we have Exaction Squad with one, Fast Talker Kimban with one, Felgor Ravager with one, Hankin Jaeger with one, Legionary with one, Pathfinders with one, Chaos Demon with one. And here's what it all looks like as a lovely lovely bar chart so that's quite the unsurprising spread there obviously brood brothers basically one of the best teams slash the best team in the game out of 14 teams 11 teams are running brood brother out of 14 teams seven are running scout squad scout squad very very good commandos the third most popular team but as i said they are very good as a defender pick for loot, but can also be quite flexible. They're still a very good team. Their main problem is bad matchups because of just a scratch, but being able to flex around that means you can just dodge all the lethal five up crit enforcing teams. So very, very good there. Then we have Mandrakes and Wormblade, both with five players each. Mandrakes are kind of worse in WTC format because they're more like to run into their bad matchups, but I think they'll still do really well, especially either picking into the dark all the time or the WTC boards. Then Wormblade, very, very good pick. You can definitely rely on them as an anchor for one of your defenders as loot, but a very, very good team overall. I'm kind of surprised a lot of certain teams didn't run Wormblade. I think Wormblade are going to be a very powerful faction at the event overall. Then we have more Blooded this month. Well, I mean, this event. Blooded did really well this month, and I'm not too surprised. Blooded are pretty, pretty solid. Phobos Strike Team, this is the one that surprises me most. They're the most popular elite team at the moment. I can see why they do well on WTC boards, but I'm not too much of a fan. Then we have Corsair with free players. Makes sense. They can basically ensure loot uh, into the dark all the time, but do loot as well. Galapox Infected, very powerful on these open boards. 
or just as a defender being able to pick capture all the time. Halfkin, a very good meta pick. Like the Halfkin players are very confident and as an attacker, they can kind of tailor their matchups more. Inquisitor Agent, very good faction at the moment as well. Nemesis Claw, also very good, especially when you put them as an attacker, being able to pick into the dark against shooty teams and then where teams they can feel they can move up the board more, they can pick open as well. Then we only have two Hunter Clade. Interesting, like the main rationale about why Hunter Clade is like they will either win by a decent amount or lose by a minimal amount, but I'm not sure how that will play out in practice. They're a very honest team. The problem in WTC, when you're trying to, you know, when you've got a smaller pool of factions, you don't really need an all-rounder faction. You need more like a hammer faction. But I understand the logic around Underclade. Novitiates, I kind of expected a bit more. I think they do really well in this kind of format. Warp Coven as well, when they're attackers, when they can force people onto Into the Dark or Open, as well as their matchups with their ability to slow down movement across the board be very good then we have the unique picks so exaction squad really obviously like me and Mikel play a lot and I still rate Mikel as the best exaction squad player so we've been sharing a lot of exaction squad tips with each other so I'm, I'm hoping he does really well I think he's going to surprise a lot of players then we have that fast talker Kim Bam player from Italy one of the biggest legends around he could be the infamous crew player at WTC it's all all to be seen they actually play interestingly well on the WTC open boards. Then we've got Felgor, I think a solid pick there. Hankin Jaeger, also a nice sleeper pick. Legionary, very interesting. I think they're still quite solid. Pathfinders, obviously very good. And then we have the legendary, the one, the only Chaos Demons, who will probably be a defender with capture, but could play more. I think uh, for their roster, they're only taking Korn and Nurgle. Or is it Korn and Z? No, it's Korn and Nurgle. So very solid picks there. So it sh should be fun, but not too surprising seeing the spread. We're missing some factions, like notably Vet Guard. I was expecting more Vet Guard. Vet Guard as a loot defender would have been really good. No Harlequins, but that wasn't a surprise. I was expecting some Chaos Cult, like one or two. The problem K Chaos Cult have, they kind of operate the same role as Galapox, but they can't play open as good because of how the open boards are set up for uh, WTC and then I was expecting some breaches just as an attacker always picking into the dark but I guess Inquisitor Agent is just a better version of breaches at the moment so not too surprising there. So I've rambled on about the teams and the factions now the other thing is terrain so obviously this event is using a mix of open and into the dark if you scroll down on the event pack which you'll see they have like 30 maps for open and they're only doing long ways and wide, no diagonal layouts. And they're all using Bandua terrain, the terrain I've reviewed, which I think is probably the best terrain for kill team. It's really good. The only problem I have with their layouts, they have changed quite a bit, but their layouts are very pro shooting and they're the kind of maps I don't like. General feedback I've gotten from players is they tolerate the maps. Like some people love them, but generally people are like, they're not great. As I've helped, you know, practice with teams, the main problem I've found with the maps, they have a very clear attacker defender benefit where you probably always want to win board choice and pick defender to get the better board state because there are just board signs which are way better as the defender on a lot of these maps. They're also very pro shooting to an extent which is kind of warping. They've tinkered it based on feedback, but you still have maps where there's only two safe objectives and all the other objectives are either on the open or just completely in the view of vantage points with only light cover on them, meaning only teams with super conceal that can reliably play on these boards. So that's why you're seeing a lot of Phobos teams, a lot of shooting teams. I'm, as I said, I'm surprised no Star Striders. Star Striders would have done really well on these kind of boards. And then for the Into the Dark, they're not using, unfortunately, Dakota's asymmetrical layouts. They're just using the GW ones and they're still using channels. So rip whoever has to play channels. So I would have liked some comp there, but it's an interesting layer. I, I believe we don't know what maps they're gonna get each team, but the general gist is gonna be free open and two into the dark. So that's what you should be expecting for when you're playing at WTC. Now, the other thing is if you look in the event pack, they also have a list of their own FAQs. So the interesting thing, some of the FAQs make sense. Some of the FAQs do not make sense and they have some specific questions around the terrain. They've made all the walls, so you get you get these big walls, not the heavy barricades. They're like 2.2 inches, like just over two inches. So technically they should be four inches to climb. 
they're ruling them as only two inches to climb and two inches to drop because they've given them all the scalable trait, which suddenly makes teams like Crute being able to effectively fly over these things. The windows are now no longer traversable. And that's the main thing there. They also have very questionable angling measures for 40 mil bases. In the FAQ section, they show that any other base that isn't bigger than 32 mils has a 90 degree angle when tucked in. But if it's a larger base, has a 45 degree angle to be shot instead of a 90 degree angle in terms of they're easier to get shot at. So the reason is on paper, you go like, oh yeah, that's probably right. But when you actually measure it in real life, it does not make much sense because that's not how it works. It feels like it's a targeted nerf to anyone running 40 mil bases or larger, which is very weird. So as a bit of backstory, WTC in general runs their own FAQs and rulings for 40K, but they usually explain things very clearly, why they're ruling stuff in such way and why they're ruling, you know, like terrain traits in such way. I would have liked to see that for Kill Team. So hopefully that gets added on next year because a lot of changes are just there, especially when we get onto rulings. Like I won't cover them all. There's a lot of ruling that rulings there. Some general rulings make sense, but then some other rulings just go completely against rules as written. So we don't know how it was made to that assumption. Because there's a judging team and, you know, like they've if they just explained it, it wouldn't make sense because I've been discussing it with some other content creators and players. And we're just kind of perplexed by how they've got into these rulings. Like it's very not rules as written. It would have to be kind of like maybe they have some inside prior knowledge or is this their own rationale? But it would have just been nice if that was explained. And then the other downside is obviously it's kind of wild that we have two Poland teams two French teams, two English teams, well, two UK teams, and then three Spanish teams. Because out of 14 teams, we only have five unique teams from countries. So I'm hoping next year, uh, they increase the player count to eight players. And obviously we're boosting the event. So hopefully, you know, we get more countries going because I, th I don't think it was well advertised, kind of. Because, you know, like 40 40 K has like 80 countries going. So obviously that's unrealistic immediately. And obviously for the first year, it makes sense to get more players or well, more countries involved. They need to allow more multiple teams. But I'm hoping next year it just gets more individualized to represent it's just, you know, the best from that country. Because it, it's kind of weird, especially if we end up in a scenario where Spain becomes first, second, third WTC. I don't think that would be a great look. But, you know, not knocking the players, I think from going from the outside in, you would just go especially because 40k doesn't do multiple countries well in terms of entering multiple multiple teams for single country but i understand it from the first year so hopefully they change it for going forwards but overall yeah that's the wtc you know it's great you've got the bandua terrain they're playing open and into the dark you've got countries saying sending teams of five players we've got a nice breakdown of teams obviously i forgot to mention no duplicate factions can't have five brood brother players that would be silly, but um, it should be very interesting. The pairing process is very, very intense. You can almost win or lose based on your pairing process. And the other thing about when you win uh, for WTC, I'll show it now, but it's actually a 20 point scale. So if you only win by one point, it's actually considered a draw in WTC. So when you're building these teams, you're trying to be not as cutthroat as possible. You're trying to build, if you want to win the event, you're trying to build a very brutal team that wants to maximize the amount of points you can win from event, which is why you would have teams like Galapox and Defenders with Capture, because they're very likely to win big on Capture. And it's why you're probably seeing teams like Wormblade on loot, because Wormblade will do really well as a defender on loot, while as also freeing up your team to play other missions they're more likely to play. But there's a lot of mind games and people have been asking me who I think will win. And I don't really know. There's n Everyone's really good there. And there's enough spread of interesting teams with because it's, it's all coming down to the pairing process and how players do. Because if most of these teams actually draw their games and then they have one player or two who unfortunately loses big enough to mitigate all those other players drawing, we could have very surprise upsets. So I'll show the pairings in a second. So I think it could go any way, to be honest. It's very unpredictable. I know a lot of teams are very confident in themselves, which they should be going into this event. But I personally couldn't pick a winner. I... 
Obviously, I'm going to show my bias. You know me. I'm very, very loyal. So, uh, you know, I'm going to stick by the country that has always had my back. And that's why I am going to throw my support behind Team USA. USA. Because uh, <laughs> uh, there's no Team Wales or Team Philippines. Hopefully next year. I mean, obviously, UK is UK at the moment because we don't have enough of an established scene around the country. But I would love Team Philippines. I know you've got players, Philippines. You can come, yeah, like my my Filipino brothers and sisters. Um, <laughs> but it's also the Chaos Demon pick. Come on. Uh, obviously, I'm going to root for the Chaos Demons. Come on, compendium in this kind of format, the only compendium player. But you can follow along with the event at home via Best Coast pairings. But currently, the pairings have been up for round one for a week. So let me quickly show you the pairings in the overview. Obviously, for the first round, they decided have to not pair countries from the same team against each other, which I can kind of get, but I also feel like uh, you've got a lot of multiple teams there. I get it, but going forward, they won't play it. They will, if they have to play each other in the following rounds, they will. So we've got Team Germany versus Team Poland 1. Interesting, I'm not sure who's going to win there. Then you've got Team France versus Team Spain 2, um, which is going to be very tight. Obviously, Spain are very favoured to do well in this event, but I'm not sure who will win there. Then we have Team UK 1 versus uh, Australia. Very close team. Obviously, I'm going to be unbiased and say it's very, very close because Team UK will win. Uh, and then uh, uh, for, for, for Table 4, you have Team America versus uh, Team Spain Primus, which is going to be, you know, obviously they had to put the best toughest matchup first so this this could actually not decide the event but very much dictate the way things go because it's a five round event then we have team spain three i guess against uh the other french team not sure who's going to win there then we have the netherlands versus italy uh it's a very interesting matchup this team uh these two teams against each other obviously i want crew to win just because look they know it look they, they've named their team behind the crew and I believe in them so you know even though I I think Netherlands are great gotta back the crew and then we've got team UK versus team Poland uh <clears throat> obviously I'm going to be unbiased here it's going to be a very tough round uh very very close but I believe in team UK especially the dragon so <laughs> unbiased commentary there but that's round one and obviously they'll do three rounds on Saturday and two rounds on Sunday so that's a pretty much breakdown of the event and the pairings. It should be very fun, but that's pretty much it for me today. Please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you think of WTC. Are you excited to see that finally hosting Kill Team? Uh, which country do you think is going to win? And are you tempted to play in the next year going forward? Because we're always looking to grow these kind of events. I think WTC is an amazing format and I'd love to see it growing in the years coming forward because team formats are the best and it's just great getting more countries coming together because kill team is so popular and it'd be great to see more countries come and play and remember i've got a discord you can check out in the episode description below and a filling element games and a patron if you want to give me some more support and i'll quickly shout my patrons so for my adepts of the crew i have tom super cow steven sam nick mr meatwad mercenary q lucas john thomas graham dave meets world down of goldens chris and then for my veterans of the crits i have samja so thank you so much for all your support it really means a lot to me and helps support the channel but yeah i am very late because of work i am very overwhelmed at the moment but i'm off for a few days i'm at warhammer world this weekend for their tournament i'm gonna nice just relax chill out i've got my necropox infected ready so if you're down at nottingham in warhammer world for the weekend come and say hi or if you're at the event come and say hi should be a nice fun old time i'm itching to get my crew on the f uh not my crew my Gatafox infected maybe I, I, I could actually bring crew you know that would throw a lot of people off but i'm i'm, I'm looking to have fun just be a nice relaxing weekend i need it but i will also be feverously watching along for wtc and cheering along the way i'll probably do depending on how this video is do i'll probably do a post wtc rundown just because i think wtc is really cool and um i'm glad i can't be there this year but i'm definitely definitely going next year so unfortunately it's not streamed this year they're only streaming 40k you know maybe i could stream next year i might go there to do that but streaming events is especially team events is very difficult so it's not the easiest thing to do but I'm very hyped for WTC. And remember, no matter what team you support, your country always has a chance to win as long as they can roll a crit.